Hi, my name is Willix, and this is just a short little episode explaining some of the early power for Titan mode Project Ozone 2. I'd done a version of this before, and I've deleted it. And the reason I redid it was I didn't take into account the recipes from Titan mode. I wasn't even in Titan mode when I did the test, so some of the figures were wrong too. So let's go over some of this, uh, these generators. The first one you're going to have to make for the quest is going to be the survivalist generator. And it's not a bad little generator. It puts out 5 RF per tick. But its real saving grace is it is really cheap to make. It's the easiest one of these, the bunch to make here. It's this one here. Just some stone, a piston, and a furnace. So pretty damn cheap. However, if you're going to consider burning that type of fuel, you'd be much better off with the furnace generator. Um, this one here, furnace generator puts out... Oh, it's full. Hold on. The furnace generator puts out 40 RF per tick. So, eight times more. So let's see what does that take to make. It's a uh, furnace generator. So just a little bit of iron. Um, not that bad at all. Okay. So if you're considering using um, survivalist generators, you're much better off to upgrade to furnace generators. Same fuel type, better output. Now last time I did this, I spoke very poorly of the lava generator. I'm not going to make that mistake this time. Um, it is a worthy contender. Uh, the reason for that is lava is so easy to come by on uh, in this pack. I'll show you why in a sec. So the lava generator... Oh damn, the thing's full again. Uh, puts out 40 RF per tick. So, pretty good amount. And let's take a look at the recipe for it. Oh, actually, I've got to do inventory to do this. R. Now, the problem with it is it takes gold, and that's the thing, the metal you're going to be the most short of in the game. Uh, you can get gold by, uh, there's a 100% drop rate if you um, sieve uh, crushed netherrack. But, and I'll show you another way of getting gold in future episodes as well. So it's not too bad that way. But the real saving grace for this thing is, notice I've got a Eulorium block underneath this. And normally I put lava under a crucible to make your uh, lava. The reason I did that is it now has a melting speed of 50 times the amount. So uh, a torch would be one, a uh, lava would be two, uh, burning netherrack is three, uh, blazing pyrithium is 7. This thing's 50. And you can get even faster than that. 10 times faster than that. You can go up to 500 if you put uh, a nuclear bomb underneath it. But you have to go into the nether and find the nuclear uh, material or get the nuclear material some other way, uh, which isn't easy to find to get that. But you could get the Elorium right away and have one of these things up and going. Um, and these pipes here are very cheap too, these iron pipes. A lot of people like the culinary generator. I don't think highly of it at all. Uh, let's see. In the beginning you'll have apples as food. You stick an apple in there, you're only getting 16 RF. If you want to uh, feed food to something, wait till we get to the biogenerator. A whole different animal. Okay, that covered those off. Let's go over the Sterling generator. Now normally this thing is dirt cheap to make, but uh, in this, maybe not so much. So we put it in there, we're getting 50 RF per tick when it's burning something. But let's go over uh, the Sterling generator. In this pack, it takes four survivalist generators, an iron furnace, and a few other things to make it. So still not that expensive, and it does put out 50 RF per tick. But you can't feed it lava directly. You'd have to put the lava into buckets and stick them in there that way. 
Um, so another consideration. This one's a little odd. This is from uh, Galacticraft. And this is a uh, coal generator. And we got to wait till the hull heat gets up to uh, 100. There we go. And now it's generating electricity. Oh, no, it's still not ready. Wait, let's start spitting out some RF. It will sometime soon. It's going to show us an RF value. While we wait for that, let's go over the coal generator and uh, what it costs to make. It's actually pretty cheap, so it's interesting that way. It's just some iron, an aluminum wire, some copper, and a furnace. The aluminum wire is just some wool and some aluminum. And we're putting out 75 RF per tick. So that would make it one of the winners if it wasn't for the fact that it had to use these stupid wires to connect it. If you don't mind that, they're not particularly expensive, then sure, that's not a bad option. It's 75 RF per tick. Okay, this is probably the most complicated of the ones that doesn't need a machine to make. It's the thermoelectric generator from Immersive Engineering. I'm not particularly impressed with a lot of the immersive engineering power, but uh, that one's pretty good. Let me just clean out the pipes here. There we go. So it's putting out 126 RF per tick. And you just put lava on one side, water on the other, do that a couple of times, and you end up with 126 RF per tick. The only problem with it is it's slightly more complicated to make. The, uh, where is it? I found it every time before. Why can I not see it this time? It's a generator. It's thermoelectric. You can see it and I can't. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so the difficult part is you're going to need steel. Uh, now, I'll show you how to get steel. But uh, the Constantine plates aren't actually that bad. They're, uh, you just hit an ingot with a hammer to make the Constantine... is put in the smeltery, copper, and nickel. So it's not that bad to make. Uh, and it puts out 126 RF per tick and takes no fuel. And because it's the most complicated to make, I'll probably do that one in my Let's Play just because I want to show you how to do it. Now, this was my favorite in the last episode of this, or the last time I did this episode. But uh, maybe not anymore. It's the heat generator and it puts out 640 RF per tick. Now there's lava on five sides of it, underneath, on top, behind, and each side. And it puts out 640 RF per tick. But the problem with this thing is the recipe has changed. It used to be dirt cheap to make it. Now you're going to need to make things with metal infusers and stuff. So you have to have machinery first. So that makes this a good uh, sort of second tier um, type of uh, power. But it could be beaten out by this one here, the mechanism bio generator. How that works is a crusher, you put wheat in the crusher, it crushes it into biofuel. Biofuel gets put into the bio generator. And then it's going to take a sec to empty this one out because it puts out a lot of power. And I've got to make a big one of these because it takes it a second to stabilize. Puts out 3,500 RF per tick and only eats a little bit of wheat. 
really good. So if you make a wheat farm and you put down like 10 of these, you got 35,000 RF per tick. That'll keep you well into the mid game. Okay, that covers uh, everything I wanted to go over for today. Um, th this will keep you till you get into uh, like big reactors or the uh, mechanism reactor. Um, mechanism reactors might actually be interesting because they uh, we've got fluid cows in this, and the biggest pain with the mechanism reactors was the uh, salination plant. Well, you can use the fluid cows instead, so it might be a serious consideration. Well, that covers it. I hope you enjoyed the updated information. Go out there and have some fun. Thanks.